Uh, hello, Dr. Kamal. So nice to see you. Uh, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm okay, and I'm very excited to hear about your patients and uh, the the cases that you've uh, managed to to help so many patients. Please tell us yeah. more. So today we will be discussing uh, two or three cases. So first one we that we are going to discuss is the autism oh, case. Difficult. Yeah, I think we have recorded a small video on that as well before. Yes. But I think it's better to discuss a live case that I have already treated so that people can know how we can help them with Ayurveda. Exactly, because uh, one of the uh, the aims of, of the, those interviews that we conduct right now is to show people how Ayurveda can work with uh, Western medicine and how they can both uh, create good results for the patient. They are not right. mutually exclusive. They are supportive right. of each other. That's why we always, we never just say in every case, just do Ayurveda, Ayurveda. But it's just when, which one is best for you at what time? You should go for that. Yeah. Exactly. So let's start. Sure. Yeah. So the autism case, uh, he's a young boy, 12 years old. And he has the symptoms of like hyperactivity that we commonly see in autistic child. Mm -hmm. And secondly, he has repeating. He was repeating tasks. Like if uh, he's brushing his teeth, he'll keep on brushing for some time, and then after a few seconds, he'll start brushing again hmm. because he's forgetting that he has done that task already. Wow. Yeah. And the third symptom that he is having is indigestion. Uh, I would say ninety percent of the autism cases is indigestion will be there. And it correlates with the thing that Ayurveda says, whenever you are treating a disease, when you are working on a disease, always start with your Agni. Make it better, make it balanced. So in this case also, in autism also, we are looking towards the you know, digestion. How is the digestion of that patient? Right? And then he's not much of socializing with other people, like when he's going out with the parents or playing with the friends. He's just, you know, in himself trying to play with his own toys and not interacting with other people more. Also, yeah, showing randomly sitting anywhere. Like he'll just stand from the place he's sitting and then sit somewhere else, then sit somewhere else. He was just shifting places, like more of a vata symptom that we can say, like moving all the time. And, and the, the other one is slurred speech. He's not able to speak properly, the, like to make sentences. We have to understand what that uh, child is saying. After that, uh, most commonly what I have seen is imbalance walking. Some uh, kids who are, yeah, some kids, uh, I'm just, uh, presently I'm having a case of autism in my clinic. It's He's a four-year-old boy and he, uh, just because he wants things on the shelf, he keep on, you know, uh, taking his toe upwards, like trying to take the things. Wow. So what that thing has made like a habit. Now he's walking like that only with one toe upwards. Wow. He's walking on a toe like that. So that has become a habit. And generally we don't observe that this can be because he's more into, I want attention. Some autism, autism kids, they have ADHD as well. Attention deficient hyperactivity disorder. So they will be more hyperactive because they're not getting enough attention from the parents or the family. So in this case, um, uh, we started with this detailed uh, history of the uh, patient. We asked about the family history, any medical history of the parents and maybe grandparents and other siblings, if that kid has other siblings, as well, how are they? And after having this all the details of that particular kid, we uh, advised a few herbal supplements, few dietary changes, few lifestyle changes, and at the end, some panchakarma therapies. That can be done for that particular case right and in this case what i have advised was uh, to start because the kid is not always ready to come to the doctor for the therapies right so we have to start you know preparing him for all these things so we advise some medicated oil like shirbala so that parents can do whole body massage and head massage for some time so that he get used to having oil in the body hmm. And later, because we are planning for Shirodhara, so we need that uh, kid to be big, accustomed to the oils and all these things. Secondly, what we advise to make his digestion better. 
to give him more if the patient is more constipated more towards constipation give more fiber food like that if the patient is not going regularly having more loose stools we advised as per that like, because yeah, yeah this, sorry this is this is very interesting sorry to be uh, adding yeah. uh, my observations but when you read about the the recent studies on uh, autism it's along go they go along with ayurveda and they stated that autism is very uh, connected to a poor microbiome in those kids right so they do have uh, very few good bacteria uh, in yeah. the guts and so ayurveda knew this 3000 years ago right <laughs> so we are going yes uh, we are helping yeah. with uh, probi probiotics and with prebiotics this is wonderful that's why we always start working with that thing because that's the only way we can get that kid accustomed to what we are going to do in the future Mm. And that patient or that kid has to be mentally prepared as well. Okay, for next few days, for next few months, you have to see the same doctor again and again. And the kid will be mentally prepared. Okay, and then you have to be a bit friendly with the kids because they like someone who is talking with them in their own language, right? So wow. they get a bit uh, comfortable talking to you and telling you things and then following what you are saying them. Mm. And after that, we just uh, tell them like, you know, like we do training for the kids. We have to train them. We have to train their parents first. Like just try to do these things. Try to talk in this language. Always keep on saying the same repeating words so that they will understand that we are trying to teach them something. And that because and the interesting fact, I will tell you, some of the autism kids, they have very sharp memory. Even though they are not talking properly, even though they don't have, uh, like, you know, proper speech, but they have very good memory. Like, few areas of their brain are so uh, good. Yeah. Uh, like, people I'll see good at singing. Some will be good at, you know, any particular art. Wow. So, it means they one of that area of their brain is so much, uh, you know, strong okay. that they can yeah. learn things. This is what I expected after watching Beautiful Mind, right? The the guy was so incredible. He had uh, emotional intelligence almost non-existing, but his memory and his mathematical skills were incredible. Yeah. It is in most of the cases it will be like one kid may be good at some like artwork, the other kid can be good at math math skills, some other can be good at scientific things as well. Mm. So it totally depends, but they have this, you know, X factor in them that they are distinguished from the other kids, even though they are not, like, behaving normally. Imbalance, so, absolute imbalance, imbalance. yeah. yeah. Mm. And also, one more thing that I told them, because almonds, uh, I think we all know almonds help a lot. And in this case, almond helped them with his, the memory, learning new things, then with the speech. Because what we advise is that uh, having almonds, soaked almonds with honey mix in the morning can help you get better speech. And hmm. sometimes when there is delayed uh, speech in kids that uh, when they don't achieve that speaking milestone at the proper time, we ask them to have soaked almonds with honey. It helps to well, have a good speech and they start talking a bit early. Okay. How many almonds? almonds? Like eight almonds or more or less? It uh, actually, it depends because in this case, the kid is 13 year old. So we can give seven to eight almonds. But if the kid is small, three or four, just try with uh, two or three almonds. Huh. Yeah, sometimes they don't even like honey or almond. We have to get them comfortable by adding maybe something else that they like instead of honey. Uh, I, I heard this, uh, this maybe a fiction that autistic kids prefer sweet foods over spicy or many different flavors that they like uh, monothematic meals. Is this true? Uh, I think uh, I don't know much of the scientific data on that, but personally, I have seen few kids who are more attracted towards the candies, chocolate, like more of sweet things, as you were saying. So this can be something which is, you know, we are observing and then we can make a data out of that, that, okay, out of 10, how many were getting more into sweet things? So that's mm -hmm. a way we can have some uh, data or the numbers. Yeah. yeah. So this and, is not easy to convince them to have a balanced diet, right? Because yeah. sometimes they'll get so uh, irritated, so annoying that they won't even listen to you. They'll start 
you know hurting you and they won't like lie down on the floor like that so it's easy to con like so very hard to control them you need at least two or three persons like okay to be very calm peaceful talking to them and make them understand sure yeah mm -hmm. uh, so after that we worked on digestion that was the best part i would say because uh, every time when we talk about any problem as i told you before we have to start working on the digestion first yes. and in this case also i started giving some of the herbal supplements according to the age according to the prakriti and then digestion was improving he was getting uh, more of normal bowel movements and then uh, his uh, all the active hyperactivity got slowed down that was the best part that parents are happy about because they right. are tired of controlling them and in every situation you can't just ask your kid to shut down and don't say anything so this is the thing they are most worried about the hyperactivity mm -hmm. and uh, at the end lifestyle like we have to be make them a routine some of the kids they will be still do bed wetting even though they are 13 years of old so we have to teach them to train them before sleeping you have to go to toilet and then in between maybe at a fixed time two o'clock three o'clock just uh, wake them up take to the toilet so that they have a habit they don't even do like randomly anytime because you can't know you're also sleeping parents are also sleeping mm -hmm. so there's you know, these trainings these things you have to teach them and also uh, the last one that i told you was panchakarma therapies what i have observed in this case was i did shiro lepam because shiro dhara was a bit difficult we have to ask them to lie down for one hour and they are so hyperactive they won't stay in that position for long so what we did was shiro lepam like we did some medicated herbal powders paste and then applied them on the head and covered them with a cap or some cloth so that they can have it hold it for some time that's a very good way and i have observed uh, like it calmed down those kids uh, in a very better way now they listen to you what you are saying now they follow your instructions along with that i did nasyam as well putting oil in the nostrils mm -hmm. i did that as well and abhyanga the one i gave to the patient initially in the initial consultation because abhyanga makes you relax right yes. makes your muscles relax yeah we all know that Yes, and that kid also start enjoying that at some stage, and then he's like, "Okay, I want to do that thing, oil thing." Special oils or just per per practice? Special oil, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when they don't have enough strong bones, we have to decide some balle, like some oils that make them strong, like shir bala I mentioned, made of like it is base of cooked in the milk, so it make them. And then we do that um, shastik shali, you know that. red rice cooked yeah. in the milk and some herbal powders like bala we have to make a bolus out of that and do some kind of you know tap 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 on pounding on the body it makes the bones and the all the muscles of the body stronger mm -hmm. so that they have a balance walking balance speaking everything because balance is something that we need to inculcate we can't yeah. ask them to make a balance we have to help them okay. with this yeah. thing So uh, would you say that yeah. uh, in the beginning at this of the therapy uh, the kid would come to you once a week it's recommended or once a month how often for the uh, panchakarma So initially when the kid came for the consultation I asked to come back after 15 days because I need to see I need to work on the digestion I have to give some time for that they took the herbal supplements they followed the dietary instruction and after 15 days when they came back we started with the panchakarma therapies because always panchakarma is like more frequent more better so we try to do at least twice or thrice a week if not like five days a week but at least twice or thrice and then slowly if the kid is getting comfortable we can make it more like four times a week as well ha huh. yeah so it like we try to make it a 28 days cycle so that he is bit more comfortable and we can do more of therapies because he is getting calm down and we have to do other therapies as well hmm Okay. This yeah. is this sounds really promising. Wonderful. It takes yeah. a village, right? In, in the case of the autistic kid. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, sometimes uh I have seen another case as well. There were two kid uh, two like twins, a lady delivered two twins and both were autistic. Wow. That was the hardest part because you it's hard to control one kid with such of so much of hyperactivity. How can you do that with two kids? 
and then different habits different things they are doing at same time so i think it's very important to observe your kids since he or she is a you know very early age in a childhood because sometimes we don't notice that something is not working properly right something is wrong we have to observe very little things and so that we can start working as early as possible you can't just avoid that okay you can just finish autism it is something that mm. has come already right you can not just treat it like taking medicine and okay after five days it will be gone no you just exactly. can manage well, it sometimes when the kids are small we just want to see the nice side right we exactly are- Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm just pampering them all the time, but you have to be very practical with observing little things, how they are doing, how they are behaving, how they are talking. Okay, okay. The uh, patient number two. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, with patient number two, uh, I had a female patient of thirty-seven year old, and she had very painful periods. And mm-hmm. even before she gets her period, or one week before that, she'll start having that tenderness in the breast or lower abdominal pain, back pain, some kind of different discharges. And then mood swings were the biggest problem for this patient because she will get irritated easily. She'll just shout on someone randomly because she is having the mood swings because of that. Also, the reason that I got after having the detailed history was that she was taking oral contraceptives from last seven to eight years. And wow. the reason she started was that she had painful periods and the doctor suggested, okay, start this thing because anyhow, you are inducing the periods after taking oral contraceptives. You're not getting natural periods, right? That will obviously help you with the painful periods, but what that is affecting you in a wrong way is that you are, they are imbalancing your hormones, natural secretion of the hormones. Yeah. Your pituitary gland, your hypothalamus is getting confused. And okay, something is coming from the outside. Do we have to do that thing still or no? Exactly. That's you are, one of the problems. You age faster, right? As a woman. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's it's nature's law. When you will disturb something that is going on it's in its own way that nature has decided, if you will interfere with that thing, it won't go the same way again. It's the same with the thyroid, you know, the the uh, artificial uh, TSH and uh, thyroid hormones result in a smaller production of your own thyroid. Yes. Or or even in zero production if you take it over a couple of years. Yeah. That's why this is very important to manage the dosage of your thyroxine uh tablet that you take. Sometimes it will get, you know, more than what you need. Sometimes it's too low. You have to make a balance with that as well. Or if you if your thyroid still works, maybe it's good to do it temporarily and then finish. Don't yeah. do it for, for many years because this is kind of crazy. Well, some people just accept that, okay, this thyroid tablet, I have to take it for the whole life. No. It doesn't work like that. No. It is different for every person. I Dosage is different. Is time is different. different. Medicine is different. Everything. Yeah. This is what we call in Ayurveda, individualized treatment prakriti based on the prakriti we have to see what we are doing with the client it's and not like yes. you are just having fever take this paracetamol and panadol you are done okay. yeah <laughs> and, and uh, yes this is the first thing and uh, the second thing observe yourself yes this is something which i think we all have to learn we all have to learn we are not doing it the way we should do I think this is the thing that we have to teach more than what we are teaching with, okay, take care of yourself, eat this, don't eat that. First observe it, then decide what you are eating, what you should not be eating. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, yeah, this female was uh, taking oral contraceptives and then after that she was just getting withdrawal bleeding. The time when she will skip the medicine, she won't get the period. So it clearly uh-huh. shows that she was clearly dependent on the medicines, on the oral contraceptive pills, right? After that, uh, then once she, she started this treatment, she started having anxiety, sleep disorders. She won't get sleep easily. It will take like two hours to for her to get to sleep. And then it's hard to get up in the morning. She'll feel lazy, sluggishness in the body, fatigue all the time feel like not talking to everyone around and then um, 
have different kind of cravings like sometimes to have spicy food sometimes to have sweet cravings so all this is because first of all your metabolism is not working properly secondly you are uh, interfering with what is going on in the body naturally but and then it's even important because if she didn't get uh, periods was she already starting the uh, the perimenopausal period or the the of a period in her life yeah, we have to see that as well because Yes. Yeah, she was 37 years of old and nowadays what we are seeing is that some women are getting uh, the menopause at a very early age, even before that's 40s. It. That's how it sounds like. Yeah. But the history was she was taking the uh, pill some a very long time. So first we have to go back to the past, to the history that she has done, make it correct and then see if still that problem is there. Then we can think of the other point that you are saying, the menopausal thing. Yeah. So we have to just go step by step and then see where is the point that we have to work on. Sure. Yeah. And the uh, other thing that is very complicated in this case was that she was a patient of IBS. Ooh. I think you shared a case of IBS in our last video. So that's why she was so lean and thin. She was having uh, regularly iron infusions because of low hemoglobin levels. And she was uh, passing uh, blood to her stools and she was going 8 to 10 times in a day. So that was making her body very weak, metabolism going down and all these symptoms getting aggravated. But uh, IBS in that case could be uh, related or connected uh, to her estrogen and progesterone levels, right? Yeah, but uh, the thing in this case was IBS was something she was suffering from last before. 15, 20 years, yeah, uh -huh. like when she was quite young. Huh. So that's why we have to work on IBS symptoms differently, then her painful periods differently, and then asking her to stop taking the OCPs. And so also, is, if, uh, if she had uh, IBS uh, since uh, for 15 or 20 years, then uh, the, the mental training, right? Meditation and getting uh, really used to managing stress. Or exactly. get rid of the stress in her life. Because we say IBS sometimes can be psychological and because you are thinking too much, you are overstressing yourself and then your second brain, you are thinking from your first brain, then your second brain getting affected, yeah. then your gut getting affected, you're getting IBS symptoms, going to toilet multiple times. So I think yeah. this is like a vicious cycle going on when in this case, especially, I have to be very careful with what I'm giving as a herbal supplement, advising diet or lifestyle changes. Yeah. But after advising so many things, she worked out really well. Presently, she's not taking any uh, pills for the period. She's getting natural periods normally without any pain. Hmm. Her mood swings got reduced a lot. Her IBS symptoms getting better, not fully treated, but getting better. Then her sleep is quite a lot better now. She is sleeping on time, getting up fresh in the morning, and then again going to the day. So all these symptoms subsided with what I have advised. Wonderful. So now I'm going to discuss yeah, what we advised. Wonderful. So my favorite part is that in any case, in any of such cases, when you have painful periods, mood swings, like this typical kind of, you know, tabular form of symptoms, I always advise my favorite thing, that's Rajasuala Charya. That is something we call in Ayurveda, that when you are going through your period, when you are about to get your periods, you have to follow a routine. Yes. Dietary routine, right? I think we have discussed this before, I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. But we can so what, it. Yeah. So what I advised was just to stop taking white salt, white sugar, all the white flour made things. Just one week before she had, she was about to get her periods. Although in general also we advise not to take such things. But especially before the period and during periods, I advise just totally stop it. Because, you know, sometimes the sodium levels in the body high sodium levels can increase the inflammation, then it will lead to your painful periods. Yes. But uh, in the case, it's difficult. So uh, she probably asked you, okay, a couple of days before my period, I have uh, sweet cravings. What would you recommend her to, to eat? So I always recommend in such cases, just to settle down your sweet cravings, have some sweet fruits rather than having sweet 
cookies or chocolates or any other bakery products because you are you are not craving for the sweets your bad gut bacteria is craving for the sweets yeah you have to make them full you have to give them something which is sweet but not uh, very bad for your body just it like the fruits it's also the the body is preparing for uh, for major work and wants extra energy right fructose is one of the easiest uh, combustion <laughs> fuels right, in right. our body yeah i also I think, for the patient yeah. who liked uh, dates and figs before that uh, that also worked well yeah, dates are always good for such patients because we can ask them to soak them in the milk as well and then mix it with the milk make like a smoothie sort of and then have it Wonderful. Or secondly, what we can do is like uh, boil it in the milk and then have that milk as well. With a little bit of cardamom. Yeah, <laughs> you can always add that for the good flavor. Yeah. Okay. And also, second thing that I advised was sometimes you can have uh, on and off chamomile tea because that will soothe down her nervous system. She can have shatavari, asparagus. She can boil it and make a tea out of it or just add it with your little bit of milk, half cup of milk and have that. And also the other thing that I advised was just to massage her lower abdomen with the castor oil, lukewarm castor oil, mm -hmm. and then put some heat pad for the fermentation so that she can get easy periods without any pain. Her, uh, you know, the lining of the uterus will get relaxed, not be stretched out more than what is required. After that, well, how about um, the grenade juice would that work also? Uh, pomegranate juice. Pomegranate juice, yeah, definitely, and also especially in this case because she has IBS as well, and mm -hmm. pomegranate is good for IBS patients. And uh, I think I discussed with you, I shared with you that in IBS, I advised the peel off the pomegranate to make it a decoction out of that for IBS patients. And she's doing that as well. Right. So it really helps. Yeah. Yeah. And also I asked her to sit in the morning sunlight. Because, you know, sometimes you don't have if, uh, enough vitamin D levels to make that thing normal, to make her uh, happy hormone secretion, you know, increased secretion of happy hormones when you sit in the sunlight. Your body is, uh, you know, observing a lot of good vibes, a lot of natural things you can absorb and have it in your body that you need at the time. Also, uh, I think I advised her for that. I think I told you the shatavri and turmeric. Sometimes we use that powder turmeric, but we do have that raw turmeric like uh, in the shape of ginger. You can use that as well. Make a... Uh, golden milk with that adding that turmeric into the milk wonderful so these are the very little things i advised her i advised definitely for the meditation because she need that for all the symptoms she is having to make a routine to add all these things in her diet to avoid all the sugary things that she's been taking to oh. avoid all the heavy foods to make a small uh, meal portions in a day and then see how she is getting along with that. Is it digesting on time or is it like taking more than the required time? Again, it comes like, as you said, you have to observe your body. And, uh, and my question is, since uh, there were many changes that you asked her to do to her daily routine and to her diet, what was the biggest challenge uh, for, for the lady, for the patient? For her, I think... Uh, stop taking the oral contraceptive pills mm. because she, she was so scared that if I will stop that I won't get my periods at all. Wow. And even though she will get the period that will be so painful she can't bear it. Wow. But what I did was that I asked her to stop it every alternate week not stop or like you know all of a sudden. Make it for uh, in one month don't take it another month take it. Then after two months, stop taking for two months, then three months. And then now at present, she's not taking it at all. She's getting very normal periods without pain. That was the hardest part because you have trained your body in such a way that body is not ready to accept that I can leave this thing. Sure, sure. That's right. very interesting. Hmm. Okay, thank you. So okay. these are the two important cases I always wanted to discuss with you. And I think it will help most of our patients. Yes. who need help in such cases.
Very, very interesting. Thank you for sharing, Dr. Komal. I think we have uh, seven more minutes. If you want to start the patient number three uh, in uh, the brief overview, then it, it should be okay. Okay. So uh, I'm going to discuss one of uh, my patient who is very really high pitta, high kapha, prakriti. He is having heaviness in the right side of the body all the time, like especially in this area, in the nose, in the forehead, in this temporal region. He will feel like, okay, something is there and whenever he will touch that thing, he will have the tenderness. Mm -hmm. So he feels like something is getting clogged in here, not getting out. So this was a very, uh, you know, something he told me in a very layman language. I cannot correlate with something medical term that what he is trying to say, what is he suffering from exactly. Then after sometimes, uh, after a few consultations, he told me that he has abdominal pain. Whenever he eats something, he will start having the abdominal pain lower abdominal and then it will be like you know very pain he will feel like why i did eat that thing abdominal pain was there but does he go to the wc regularly is he regular with with wc going to the toilet. oh <laughs> yeah 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 he is regular but it's not like he's get going to the toilet in the morning at the same time Sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon, and sometimes in the evening. It's not like, it depends what he's eating. Mm. So his gut was very sensitive. And then he has severe acidity. He will have that uh, GERD as well, that uh, flush of the sour fluid that coming out of the mouth. He feels like something is coming out like that. And also he will have some burning sensation in the epigastric region in the chest. And also large amount of mucus used to come. Whenever he will do some uh, jalneti or whatever, he will blow his nose or anything, a lot of mucus used to come. And that mucus is also not normal white color. It will be sometimes green color or yellowish or something like that. So it shows that there is high pitta and high kapha involved in this case. Right? Yes. And then, But he was a very uh, strong mind patient and then he followed what I told him. He was ready for Vamana, like Mrs. Uh, induced emesis. And then we did Virechana after a few months. Then we did Basti. Because we cannot do all these things together. So we have to take some gap in between. And while doing this uh, Vamana, Virechana and Basti, we were doing other external therapies as well. Sometimes Nasya, sometimes Shirodhara, sometimes Abhyanga. So we will keep on doing these therapies. But uh, it took him um, like approximately eight to nine months to get better because he was suffering from all these problems from a very long time. Like it was a very chronic case from last 20 years. He was suffering from all these things. But he was just taking symptomatic treatment, getting better for some time and then going to the same situation again. Sure. Did yeah. you ask him to, to change his diet? Because uh, something tells me that his diet wasn't ideal. Right. Diet was very bad. I have changed a lot of things in his diet, but he started following that. And even uh, when he stopped the treatment, he was taking that diet even after uh, getting better. Mm -hmm. He stopped everything. He never ate outside. He would always prepare fresh food at home. That too, very sattvic diet he was taking, like khichdi, porridge, dalia, and all these things. Uh -huh. So that is easily digestible by his system and not getting putting burden on the uh, digestion power. We yeah. have to remember that uh, Pita and Kapha, uh, Prakriti, those are the people who are very stubborn, as you said, uh, very right. strong-minded, who really like to eat and uh, who sometimes have uh, fast metabolism and sometimes not so fast with all the mucus right. right? So this is an incredible accomplishment on your side <laughs> that he changed the diet so drastically. Wow. <laughs> that is the reason because he was so much keen to get better. Ah. First time for me he was like i don't know i just want to get better whatever she will ask me ready to do that whatever it costs me i can sacrifice so many things but i want to get better of course he was suffering from past 20 years it's not easy you know you just don't feel like normal you don't feel comfortable anytime soon and then you are not eating what you want to eat yeah. it's hard yeah so that was his commitment to me and that's why 
such cases get better. Otherwise, when we don't have a commitment from the patient, we can't do anything alone. And one of the problems with GERD is that you're supposed to finish by 5, 6 p.m., right? So he cannot have a big dinner uh, in the evening with the uh, heavy uh, meal with uh, meat or uh, this type of things, right? Right. He was a pure vegetarian, so uh, it was a bit easier for him to have the options in, like, vegetarian options. Mm. Then he started having his dinner by 8, then he came down to 7, and then 6.30. 6.30 was his last. I can accept that because before, because when you're having dinner at 6.30 and sleeping around 11, there's like large gap. You can feed hungry again. Sure. So 6.30 was ideal for him. He started with 8, 7, and then 6.30. Oh. After that, I asked him to walk some steps after having a meal. Also, I asked him to have green fennel seeds after he finishes his meal. And also to have that hingwashtak powder. There is a herbal powder in Ayurveda. To have it with the ghee in between the meals, you know. Ayurveda talks about which uh, system of your body when you are taking medicines. Okay, If you are taking medicines for your mind, if you are taking it for your apan vayu, for your lower body, what time you should take that medicine? So there are kalas, right? There are particular time of one kind of medicine. If you are taking medicines for your respiratory system, you have to take it muhur muhur, like repeatedly, like multiple times in a day. Yeah, so that's you use lungs multiple times a day, right? Yeah. <laughs> so these are the changes. And then he increased fiber intake. He used to eat that lotus seeds, you know, makhana. Yes. He used to eat that. Then more of liquid diets. Then I asked him to have less of milk, like less of dairy product. Mm -hmm. But he can have like very diluted buttermilk because it helped with his digestion and the acidity, severe acidity as well. So like taraka would be good, right? Yeah, that's takra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's okay. my, my hindi isn't very good <laughs> but yeah. I, I like to drink it and i prepare it <laughs> with, so with i have observed that salt. that, really that like works it. wonders yeah mm -hmm. really good for such patients how do you pronounce it takra takra okay takra T A K R A. Yeah. and then there's the therapy you know takra dhara like shiro dhara we do it in here on yeah. the forehead yeah so it prepared with the same takra, but with some of the decoction and the, the powders as well, herbal powders. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Kamal, I think we have to finish. Um, you yeah, have to wrap that's it up. Okay. I think I'm done with this case as well. Okay. And if you have questions, we can discuss it with the 